Hi, welcome back to Will's Crafts. We're filming this video during Christmas season, so Merry Christmas! Today we're going to make Hagar and Helda, the two winter white gnomes of my world. They're a little noisy. I'm trying not to ring them while I'm talking, but they just want to do that. I can't help it. Anyway, let's get started. The items you need to, to do this craft are a pair of white socks, some rice, a little bit of fiber fill, lace, white yarn, and a colored yarn, some fun fur, and a few rubber bands. The decorative items you'll need for this craft are some wooden beads and some bells, and then some sort of embellishment. I have some snowflakes. Or you might use some little poinsettias. The tools you'll need to make this craft are your glue gun and some glue sticks, something to protect your surface, a pair of scissors, something heavy. Today I'm using a roll of tape, some cardstock, a measuring cup, a ruler, pencil, and your X Acto knife. In order to do this craft, you need to make the man's beard, and for that you need a beard pattern. <clears throat> the best way to make the beard pattern is to have a piece of cardstock and wrap it around the body of the man as far as you want his beard to go around. So I'm going to mark it right about there. Then you want to see how long it should be. And remember, you're going to have it, it's going to curl up under the hat. So you need that line to be just a little bit longer than you think. So maybe a, a half inch beneath the bottom seam of the man. I'm going to cut this. Right there. And this is how wide it needs to be so we can make a square out of our or rectangle out of our cardstock. Then fold the cardstock in half. And begin at the bottom. And just cut a nice curve around leaving the top as wide as you as you measured and there's your pattern for your beard now to make the beard for our gentleman we are going to turn the fur upside down so that you have this webbed fabric part toward you then take your pattern that you just made and go around it with a pen. <laughs> now, make sure that on the other side all of your fur is facing down. Otherwise, you'll cut it off if it's curled up underneath. Then take your X-Acto knife and just gently cut, don't cut deeply, but cut the webbing. I think on the video you'll be able to hear the click, click, click of those threads as they're getting cut. Then once you get it cut, you can pull it apart. Yeah, if you get it cut. You can go back and cut a little deeper if you find that threads are hanging off, but don't cut too deep because you will cut the fur and then your um, gnome will have a lopsided beard. 
I'm going to go ahead and cut around this and get it all ready, and we'll meet you back here in a minute. Thank you for meeting me back here. You can see that I finished cutting the beard, and when you turn it over, oh, that's a pretty good looking beard. The next part of the craft is to make Hilda's braids. And to do that, you need your white yarn, and you'll cut six pieces about 14 inches long five and six and of course they don't have to be perfect as everything with my crafts they don't have to be perfect now I want to straighten them out and take the middle take the middle and just tie a knot so that they won't be falling apart on you there you go now you need something heavy to lay on the end of your yarn just to hold it. Now you're going to count. You, you cut six pieces, so now you have 12 strands because you folded it in half. So you need six on one side. That's four, five, six. And six on the other. All right, and then this will hold it down so that you can braid. And I don't know if you're familiar with braiding, if you've had little girls that you had to braid their hair or not. And look at me, I got seven pieces on that side. I do crafts, but I don't do math. One, you take your three strands. You fold one over the middle one, over the middle one, then the other side, back and forth, over the middle strand. This now becomes your middle strand. And you braid them on down until you get the length that you want. And that length on this, uh, on this gnome is about four inches. Three and a half to four inches. Remember, you have to leave a distance to um, put up inside of the hat. I'll finish braiding this, and I'll be right back. Now that we have Hilda's braids braided, we're going to put some uh, colorful yarn I just took my Christmas yarn and cut some pieces out of it. Uh, this gives her a little color in her white winter world. We're just going to put a little bow on the end of each braid. And then I'll show you. There you go. Now we'll trim it because uh, we don't want our bow hanging down longer than her braid. Now remember, these are kind of long, but you want to fit some part of them up inside of her hat um, on the end. So, oh, that's a big bow. Let's not have quite such a big one. All right, now we'll go on and begin to show you how to make the gnome itself. 
the braids. Now we're ready to make the body of our gnome. You can see that I've cut through the heel of a woman's sock. Now I use the women's sock because it doesn't stretch out quite as big. And I don't really want my gnomes big and chunky. I want them small and cute. Um, so you cut right through the middle of the heel and then take the bottom part, the toe of the sock, and I always kind of stretch it out a little bit. Now what you want in the bottom is to put about a half a cup of rice. This is not going to work. <laughs> it's a mess. This is one of your fun crafts. If you want to get your kids in the kitchen and have them help you pour that rice in there, you can do that. I actually have a little cup that I use, I think is a little bit better, but I wanted to show you that you need about a half a cup. <laughs> and now the studio is filled with Lots of yummy rice that we'll never use again. Okay, now you just need enough rice so that you can kind of smoosh it down and it'll sit. That's what keeps it from tipping over. Uh, if it was just the sock and the fill, or the fiber fill, it would not work. It would always be falling over. Okay, so you got your rice in there. Next thing you want to do is Fill the rest of the sock with some fiber fill. And you measure, you figure out how much you need in your uh, little gnome. If you want her to be really plump, you can put more, more fiber fill inside of there. <clears throat> I might need just a little bit more in mine. Go in there. There you go. All right, now pull the rest of the sock up around. And what you're going to do, make sure you get the ends of your fiber fill down in there. You can always fluff it back up after you tie it together. Okay, then bring the top of the sock up. And this is where your little hair um, tie rubber bands come in handy whoops <laughs> and if they shoot off your finger maybe you can get your kids to go find them for you when you when you're done with your crap you want to make sure that the closing is really tight Okay, now a tip that I learned is that rubber bands don't last forever. I, I'm sure you've done something where you put a rubber band on something five years ago and you take it out of the drawer and the rubber band's broken. So we don't want that to happen with our gnomes and the rice to be all over everywhere when you open up your Christmas decorations next year. So you're going to tie some yarn around the same place that the um, rubber band was. Okay. And then for that, you can cut the ends off, tie a double knot that last time. So the ends don't come loose. cut it because I don't want it hanging out. All right. That is the body of your gnome. Now we've made our two bodies and we're going to go on to putting the hat, putting their noses on and getting them finished up. So we're going to set Hagar aside for a minute and work on Hilda. And you can see that I have the top part of the sock. Um, I like to leave this um, hem on there. It's fine. What you want to do is the sock wants to roll. 
now that you've cut it. So let it go right ahead and roll and even maybe help it a little bit. So you have, looks like a little edge across it. And then I'm going to stuff some fiber fill inside of the hat and you can put as much or as little as you want. Um, some people would like to uh, put no fiber fill in the hat. You need enough to make it fit around her. But if you leave a lot, I mean, if you leave some space, you can let the top of the hat, I'm trying to show you, you can let the hat, top of the hat droop over if you want. I like mine to be nice and puffy. So I'm putting some fiber fill up inside of there, maybe even a little bit more because you want, you want enough fiber fill for it to fit with her body so that it doesn't look like it's, uh, comes from somewhere else, even though it does. Okay. Now what I like to do is the long part of the sock where we cut half of the heel, uh, put that in the back. Now the first thing for Hilda is that we want to put her braids on and I'm facing this towards you so you can see it. Um, I just put the knot and all up inside of her hat and just string the two braids. Now I haven't trimmed them, but I'm going to do that at the very last so that um, we know they're the right length for her. And then we have stuffed the hat with some fiber fill. And we are going to put another rubber band at the top. <laughs> Can you hear that I'm trying to pull the rubber band with my teeth? A terrible thing to do in this COVID age. All right. Rubber band is on. Tie some. Oops. Sorry. Move out of the way, Hilda. I'm going to tie some yarn around that to keep it from being like falling all apart someday when the rubber band gives out, just like we did the other parts. We're tying a couple knots with some yarn. Um, I think if the socks weren't so slippery or if you are more dexterous than me, you may just skip the rubber band part and put your yarn right on there. And remember here, we're also going to have some decorative yarn when we get finished. Okay, come back, Hilda. And now I'm going to put her hat on over her braids, over her. Let me turn her around real quick so you can see what the front looks like. And while I'm doing that, I'm secretly, really secretly, tucking the yarn in from her braids. I'm gonna pull the hat down. So it's, it's over her eyes, really. Her eyes are never gonna show. And then we're gonna take the, oh, I moved it back. I moved her back too far, you can't see her. Now we're gonna take the glue gun and run some glue along the front and the back so that we have her hat secured to her body. Just a little bit of glue all the way around see how she looks from the front now that that's done. <laughs> it, it's something new here that just happened. She has a little dimple right there where her nose is going to go. Now I have some uh, wooden beads. I don't know if you can see these have a face on them so I have to be careful. They also have holes, so nobody's nostril has one hole. So I'm going to turn that all sideways so that it doesn't show. I'm going to put a little glob of glue right there where she has that perfect little indentation for a nose to go. And then 
carefully place the nose up a little bit under the hat. Make sure the hat comes down. Now Hilda has a nose, she has her braid, she has her hat on, and now we're going to put some clothes on Hilda because we do not allow our girls to run around without clothes around here. I have some lace that has a binding around and it's a gathered lace. Um, I'm going to put two rows of lace on Hilda because this is how wide my lace is. If you can find a wider lace and you just want to put one, that's fine. Um, you do it the way you do it. Now I've measured around and I'm going to, I need to set her up a minute so I can make sure her dress is not too long when she trips over it. Okay, I've measured this lace around so that I can um, put it on her already and you'll have to measure your skirt how long your um, how wide around your lady is when you're working on her I'm just gonna put some glue here I think I'm gonna have a little piece there that I'm gonna cut off when I get done but um, let's see what happens here Okay, there's the first layer of her skirt. Hold her braids up here so they don't get in the glue. And then the second layer, just a little bit above that. Be sure you don't get the, blue, the braids in the glue because they'll never come out you'll have to make new braids. I find it easier to tuck the, the back to begin with and then glue the front. Let's see if we're getting her straight here. I'm going to put just, oops, she's going to fall over. All right, fall over. I'm going to put just a little bit of glue in the front to Hold that front. And there she has her skirt. Now is the time when we can trim the braids. You can see that she's got pretty long braids. She must be like a, a Rapunzel gnome that has been growing her hair forever and never cut it. And it's okay if they drag on the ground. All right. Now, I've cut some of my um, Christmas yarn. I cut a smaller piece. And I'm going to take a piece of green and a piece of red to tie on her hat. Okay, I'm going to turn her around again and tie a bow. Let's let her lay down. Take a nap while I'm fixing your bow, Hilda. You know, Hilda's a hard-working lady. She has to clean the house, cook, go out, chop the wood while her husband's off doing whatever men gnomes do when they're out. And there's her bow. Now, we need to get the bow on there. So don't do like I did. You can tie the knot and then grab some of the yarn. And you will need to put the yarn 
you will need to put the yarn through. I'm going to show you a little trick. I learned this trick from my mom, who was a crocheter extraordinaire, and always had to be putting uh, a piece of yarn through something like a needle uh, opening or a bell in this case. What she did was just take a little corner of some piece of paper. Uh, she usually used a piece of a magazine. Today I've got some cardstock. And you just cut a little triangle. You fold it in half, cut a little triangle, and you're going to need to trim it on the side because it's going to be too big to go through your bell. Ooh, did I hit you with that? Um, and what you do is then, <laughs> it's so tiny, my fingers are cold this morning. All right, then you put the end of the yarn in the middle and fold that triangle back up. And then you use the point of that triangle to feed the yarn. Look at that magic trick. Didn't you like that? I love that trick. My mom was a really smart lady. Okay, now we're going to tie the little bow. I'm going to lay her down again so you can see me tying the bow. What I need to get is one of those um, cameras on a drone so it'll go all around and show you what I'm doing from all sides. But until that technology comes into my life, we'll just lay Hilda down and tie her bow. Come on, yarn. It is strange. As you get older and as your fingers are cold, you can't even tie a silly little bow. Come on. All right. There we go. All right. Now she's got her bow tied. Now I'm going to decide. What do you think? Do I want a poinsettia on her hat? Or do I want my snowflake? I think that on this one, on, on, on this Hilda, I have a snowflake. And on this Hilda, I think I'm putting a poinsettia. Maybe that, maybe that determines that they're from a different tribe. We'll say that. Okay, let me look at the front so I make sure where I want to put. Okay, now I just put a glob of glue on the side of her hat. And how's that? Is that the right spot? Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so there is Hilda all finished. So you can see her. Um, I think if I made her again, I might make her braids a little bit shorter. Um, but that's up to you. She's finished. Let's get to Hagar. Hagar, come here! Now we're going to do Hagar's brother, Harold. Let's start with the hat. And the first thing we want to do is seal off the end of the hat. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the other hat. And that is put the rubber band around the top that closes it off. And then we're going to wrap some yarn so that in 20 years these will still be holding together. Okay. <laughs> 
And now we're going to fill the hat. So let's be sure and get, now he's a mighty man of the forest, so he needs to have a nice puffy hat. I think I'm going to need a little more fiber fill for that. Okay. Yeah, now his hat's pretty puffy. Okay. Now for him, we are going to put the hat on over his body. Can't see what I'm doing. I'm sorry, I have to turn it around toward me so I can see that the hat is getting on there correctly. And what I'm going to do with him is I'm going to glue the back of his hat down so that I can keep it in place. Pull that hat down, young man. Okay, there. Now, I haven't glued it in the front because I want to put his beard on. And his beard needs to fit up inside of the hat. So what we're going to do, let me make sure we're getting the middle here. We're going to glue that fur. And that fur is going to go pretty much around him. Hmm. Oh. need more glue there we go because this fur doesn't want to stay in place now make sure that the fur is combed down so that it's not sticking out then you place the fur on top of him let's let it dry just in one two three seconds and then you pull the hat down And now what I've got to do is put the glue, and I hate to do this, it's so scary, to put the glue on top of the fur, because usually you, you work with the fur, you want it to be nice and fluffy. Okay, now here comes the hat down over the fur. I don't know if you can see it. Ah, we're getting goopy over here. And now my finger's inside of there. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, and now I got goop on my fingers. Um, okay, let me stand him up. Oh, we got his fur on. There's a little bit. The hat needs to come down over the glue just a little bit right there. I think we might have to doctor that up somehow later. Okay, now his hat is on. His beard is on. And what else does he need? A nose. <laughs> I'm moving everything else. You can hear me moving everything on the table, looking for where did the nose roll away to. All right. Okay, now I think I need to glue the hat down on that side a little more. Because it's not quite covering... And I'm going to turn him toward me because I can't see what I'm doing over there. All right. There, I pulled some glue off. That's the problem. Okay, there's his hat on. And his nose goes next. Now for his nose, because of that fur, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to glue his nose a little bit higher than hers so that it is part way on the hat uh, with hers you just glued it to the front of her body part and with him it's got to stick to the hat and the beard so you want to put a little piece of a uh, stream of glue down that way oh look at me <laughs> 
You know how you have nice cheese on your pizza and it strings away? Well, so does this glue. <laughs> you can see me flapping my hands around here. You can't see that part. That's, that's the magic of television. Oh, of Facebook. There you go. I want you to take a look at Harold, the rebel, who doesn't want to go together so easily as his brother Hagar did, I promise you. Uh, but we're going to put a little poinsettia on his hat anyway, because that marks the tribe of gnomes that he's from. There you go. Is that the right? Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present Hagar and Hilda and Harold and Hannah. Thank you for joining us today while we made our winter white gnomes. I hope that you enjoyed it. And especially, I hope that you enjoyed seeing me fumble with all that yarn. That's the way life goes, folks. It's real. <laughs> I hope that you had fun and that you'll join us next time. And don't forget, down below, make a comment and show us the picture of your gnomes that you made or whatever crafts you make. We'd love to see them. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hi, it's Wildana here from Will's Crafts, getting ready for next month when we're going to make these salt shaker angels. Those of you who know me know the importance of a salt shaker in my life. If you don't know the story, join us for the video. I'll tell you the whole thing. See you next time.